So we got Brian Scott here of the Union Underground, and you're actually facilitating a Back to the 2000s tour. Now, getting into that, you started that with uh, Tim King of Soil. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. And actually, um, he pitched the idea, and I, I thought it was great. You know, it was good timing for us. And uh, I liked the theme, and the timing really worked out for everybody. That's really cool, and uh, and I really like uh, like the bands that they have on offer, like uh, Flaw and Raw too. Where it's like, are they like I don't know what to call them. They're like they're bands that experienced a degree of success, but they're still at a stage where they're able to communicate directly with fans, and it's something you don't really get from like the much bigger bands in some ways. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fantastic having those guys on and, you know, raw, I was not that familiar with them back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got to discover them as something new, which was fun for me. And uh, they're fantastic. And all the flaw guys, it's going to be a very cool run. Everyone's super excited about the lineup, which I like. That's really cool, man. And it's interesting you bring that up because this isn't just about um, reintroducing bands that had success in the 2000s and sort of bringing them out that way. But in a way, you're also being introduced to something new. <clears throat> oh, Absolutely. I mean, it's a whole new generation that'll be exposed to, you know, records we did almost 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously there's going to be a lot of diehards at the shows, but, you know, they bring family members, they bring their kids even. So, you know, it's, it's a brand new exposure. And um, that's exciting too, because it'll introduce them to our new record that's coming up shortly too. So um, really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. and uh and this is all about going back um how you designed the tour and i guess i'll um like segue that into going back into your life and your musicianship when you were a kid what was your environment like and how did that facilitate your musicianship when you were growing up um, I had some musicians in the family, you know, my grandmother and most of my aunts and my mom play piano and, uh, there was always a lot of piano in the house. So that's kind of where I got introduced to music. And then of course, you know, once I hit seventh, eighth grade, the guitar took that over, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I just, you know, there was always, my mom always had a lot of great, just old 70s rock playing in the house. And I was very influenced by that. Mm -hmm. And um, when you were in middle school, you met uh, Patrick Kennison. And uh, after you guys um, graduated high school, you got like your own studio going. Now, were you kind of in that mindset of, we can do this ourselves if we put our minds to it. Yeah. I, you know, I've always had um, a huge interest in just production in general, outside of songwriting, you know, mm -hmm. and I was producing a lot of bands at the time mm -hmm. in our studio. And uh, it was really just a natural progression that we do it ourselves. And we, we really did about 80, 85% of rebellion completely by ourselves and then we, you know we went to some other studios uh before we finished up the record but majority of it was done in our you know little backyard studio with a, a little built up in the garage there mm -hmm. and you had the brand <clears throat> automatically from the the band name the brand all set up initially with uh you know union studio and then Union Records. So the Union Underground as a name, that was was that sort of immediate or was that something you sat on for a while? Um, I mean, we had the, all of those things kind of happened together. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, and we had the name for several years. I mean, we and we danced around with different names, but that one just always stuck. You know, I've I've always loved the name the Velvet Underground. I just yeah, love yeah. the way that. So you know, you switch a couple of words, and there you have it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, and when you guys came out in the mid to late nineties, that was a very interesting time because you know, new metal was kind of bubbling up, but then you had kind of teen pop kind of neck and neck with you guys. And there's always teen pop. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) There's always like inevitably, but, um, but you guys sort of carved out your own niche in the underground. And, and uh, it's funny to, figure that out in retrospect because i i mean i'm 33 now and i actually discovered you guys completely by accident (laughs) when i was uh, when i was uh 12 i i think i was either 12 or 13 years old and i was looking (laughs) i was looking on limewire son of the times for uh shame on you yeah 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 Mm -hmm. well i was you know, didn't have a CD store <laughs> in proximity to me, so I was on LimeWire. But All right, I'll let looking, you. I'll let you off the hook. All yeah, right. I was looking up the song "Natural High," and then, but by Insolence by another band, <laughs> and what I actually found was the demo of "Natural High." From from that self titled release that you guys had back in back in 1997 and yeah. I, was, I was discovering this back in i think 2003 or 2004 and i was wondering like um so like how much did uh these songs kind of change like as far as like how you wanted them to sound um, by the time you got to an education in rebellion, they they definitely went through a few little arrangement changes, but I mean the bulk of the songs really didn't change much. We kind of had um, you know a vision for what we wanted them to sound like, and we didn't really want to toy with it too much. Uh, you know, we'd maybe like shorten up the part here and there or add a texture to one thing or chop a breakdown and that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, they they really, um, they didn't change much. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's cool because like either way, like regardless of the trajectory you were experiencing then, like your name kind of gets out there and it's so cool that when i heard the riffs again of natural high and put two and two together i'm like that's the that's the band that i was Mm -hmm. actually listening to but in doing so i i got into um your more popular songs like uh you know turn me on mr dead man and you know revolution man and um how would you describe like the making of uh i know the songs were similar but how would you describe the overall camaraderie you felt when you were making an education in rebellion oh yeah we we had worked on some of those songs for i mean several years we had some of those written and even recorded uh, before we, you know, went in to start finishing up the record. Mm-hmm. So um, it was, uh, you know, uh, some of those songs, some of the older songs in that, like uh, Until You Crack and the Friends song and some of those kind of more obscure songs in the record, Trip With Jesus. Mm-hmm. Those had been around for a long time. So um, it was nice to be able to have you know, a, a diverse mix of songs. Uh, you know, it's it's a very eclectic collection of songs on that record, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, when you were uh, 
when you were starting out, it was uh, just you and Patrick. And then did you did you um, eventually add band members um, once you were signed to Portrait? Or were you did you have like people in mind before you signed? We at uh, let's see, let's think of the timeline. We were looking at John. He was in a band called Soak at the time, John Moyer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe we had already signed to Portrait when we were, you know, trying to steal him from his bands. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, and luckily we were successful there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Josh, Josh had been around before the portrait deal so he yeah he he had been around for maybe only a year or so so yeah they were added on a bit later josh and john Mm -hmm. were you all kind of familiar with how each other worked and what each player could add to the songs especially since they'd already germinated you know to completion more or less um did you have like ideas about how they could or or did they sort of uh let the process take on a life of its own once education and rebellion sort of facilitated in that way it was kind of both we we were mostly looking for guys because we knew that we were finishing up the record and you know, we were, we needed a live band. So oh. that was really more of the intention. But once we did involve them, there was a lot of great ideas. I mean, uh, you know, songs like Killing the Fly, the drum parts in that song did not exist in the way they do prior to having Josh. Oh. So um, those kind of things, uh, you know, uh, the contributions were uh, enormous, you know. Yeah, and... Um... So you've experienced uh, some lineup changes here and there. Now, Mm -hmm. did what happened with everything else? And, you know, you did the live album after An Education in Rebellion. And then um, and then you reformed in 2016. Now, with all these challenges having gone on was the second album still being worked on throughout that process um well the second album you mean like originally back yeah, in yeah. you know maybe 2002 yeah yeah um yeah you know we were working on that and i just felt like that with with that group of people at the time that we just kind of hit the wall creatively Mm -hmm. and it was just kind of time to move on, you know? So the past is the past and, you know, now what we're working on now um, is actually some of the stuff that I had been working on then is still is going to make it to this new record as well. So, and of course, a bunch of stuff that's been written recently. But there are a few things that was meant to be on the second record in 2003 or whenever it was that will make it to this new release, which is really cool. Because I, I, I want I, I don't want the new record to be some brand new sound that, you know, people are not familiar with. I want it to be a continuation of Rebellion, you know. Mm-hmm. Even the, even uh, you know as many years later as we are, it's, I, I wanted to have that feeling of that record, and I I think we were losing that working on it back then, mm-hmm. and um, that's the goal. And I I really think you do have a very interesting sound now that I now that you mention it. Um, I mean I can immediately figure out like you know, some harmony aspects like in lieu of, you know, Alice in Chains, of course. Mm-hmm. And um, it's also like, 
you you do sound um a bit like some bands that were coming up at the time here and there but you have this kind of unique pop melodic kind of approach value that's like it has sophistic sophistication to it it's not like it doesn't get lost in like the very aggressive, like in your face sort of new metal that everyone's used to. There's a lot of pop prowess and, you know, tightening of harmonies. And I can think of back in the nineties, there was this band jellyfish who, who I thought <laughs> of. So it, it, it's really cool how your band kind of stood out around that time and, had like a niche audience all its own. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, it's. I think that's why that record has kind of a timeless feel to it. I mean, he could put it on now and, and you know, it not feel dated because we didn't, you know, we kind of got lumped into that new metal thing mm -hmm. just because I think everyone that put out a heavy rock record was called new metal, but when it really wasn't, you know, yeah. especially I mean, if they have a DJ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, to me, new metal is you know, corn, Limp Biscuit, Lincoln Park, those kind. Of, and we didn't sound like that. I mean, we we're really yeah. just a heavy, a heavy rock band. Yeah. So sometimes the new metal um, label is a bit misleading for that record, for sure, because mm -hmm. it is, it is kind of a, a unique collection of of influences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Uh... And in getting to know your band, that that record has come to resonate with me a lot more. And if, you know, if I can tell, you know, my 12, 13 year old self back then, like, hey, like this band isn't only good for just one song. Check out that whole album. Like I would have been like my palette would have been so much more enhanced and, and I would have said like wow this band has like so much more to offer that that I wasn't used to back then yeah thank you appreciate it and um I mean uh of course you you went through kind of a similar uh trajectory I mean you you opened for uh Marilyn Manson, and you did Ozfest too, right? Yeah, Ozfest two thousand one, mm -hmm. which what was, was a fantastic like? lineup. What was that like? Uh, do you have any like really good poignant memories from that one? Ozfest, Ozfest was uh, just an unforgettable experience. I mean, I, I think anyone that's been on Ozfest has a similar. Um, you know, feeling about it. it. It's just, it was a real privilege to be on. Um, I mean, the memory, the memories were endless as far, I mean, you know, being able to just hang out with that many of your friends and bands that you respect and admire. And, um, you know, it was one of those things where you, you really never wanted it to end. It was exhausting, you know, touring through the summer like that outside. It's, it's you know, but you never, you didn't want it to end. It's endless summer band camp, you know. It was it, Ozfest was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, and throughout that, you've you've uh, been through you know many different lineup changes. Uh, getting this band back together. Your current lineup now is uh, uh, Bones Elias mm -hmm. and uh, Diego Ibarra. On, on, on bass and drums and what can you tell me about this lineup that has you focused and and set on going forward and also uh my guitar player's name is taz yeah he's taz, been in the, yeah, taz he's, too. he's been in the band for several years now and um we just um added bones and ashes for yeah. this run coming up and but all, all three of those guys are just fantastic musicians. And it's just, I've known Bones for a long time, known Taz for a long time. Um, just getting to know Ashes, he's a fantastic musician, great guy. So uh, I'm really excited about 
continuing on with those guys, you know, post this uh, Back to the 2000s tour. Mm -hmm. And um, I see you have gold records uh, behind you. I mean, uh, yeah. where did where in that journey, that part of your journey, did you go to to earn those gold records? Is so the production, yeah. Well, um, these are both from the same record for two different capacities that I wow. had. So this is un this is uh, the forcible entry record that Union Underground contributed um, across the nation to. Mm -hmm. So the whole one WWF is for, rock kind of thing. Yep, yep. And so one is for. Uh, being a producer on the record and then of course you know being in the band so um that and it was several years after the release of that thing that those that it finally hit gold you know so that is what those are from it's that's cool and it, it's good that it's a re reminder of where you've been and what you strive to maintain i, I mean i i really think that uh this band and especially the second record will not only reintroduce, you know, older fans like I was inadvertently. <laughs> and so I'm yeah. like kind of, I'm kind of, you know, in the middle where I'm, I'm an older fan, but I'm also a newer fan. But again, this, this, uh, this tour and what you're doing with the second record, I think will really, achieve its purpose on both you know like i said uh reintroducing fans to to your signature sound and then getting the new ones in and then mm -hmm. uh so in general like stylistically and th thematically what do you set out to do with the second record um i really want to and I kind of touched on it a, a bit a minute mm -hmm. ago. I really want it to be a continuation of rebellion. Mm -hmm. I don't want to steer too far from like, in other words, I don't want it to sound like it was a band that just got put together in 2023 and then put out a record. You know, and I want it to have that classic union underground sounds. And it does. I mean, uh, the, you know, it, it 100% will sound like a continuation of that record. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is definitely the goal. I don't want it to stray too far from that. Are you still in touch with many of the, uh, you know, people who handled, you know, production or behind the scenes side of things that, uh, that you're grateful to have maintained those connections even now? Um, you know, some of the producers we work with, I've still, I've talked to over the years, Don Gilmore, um, Ulrich Wild, um, Brendan O'Brien, uh, I've talked to actually in the last few years, wow. he, 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 he mixed the record. Um, so yeah, all those, all those guys contributions were, were huge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I bet now it's just going to be like people are going to to remember you and they're going to want to like stick with you like um, throughout this journey. And, you know, it's, um, you know, whether or not something happens that breaks you apart again, you know that you're able <laughs> to produce quality material even even today. Yeah, well, thank you. The um, it is kind of amazing. There's a lot. There's still a lot of diehard fans. We did uh, a festival called Blue Ridge Rock Festival last year, or late 2022, and um, it's amazing how people are just really pleased that you're even playing, even just playing the original record and not offering any new music yet. People are just really happy to see the the name and the band back out. And um, they will not be disappointed by the second record for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I mean, I know I can't predict the future, but 
you know, a lot of bands you see, you'd hope they reunite for kind of the long term, but then it's like, ah, they just play a show or something and then they, they fall, they're out of the spotlight again. Are you guys going to keep going with it and um, have ideas for like more albums in the future? Yeah, for sure. It's not just, it's not just going to be a tour and then, you know, see you later. Um, you know, we'll definitely, uh, I promise to put out an obnoxious amount of music over the next few years. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is, this is going to be what the, what the, un what the union underground is really made of. And in some ways, again, like we discussed, not just the signature sound that they've built over the years, but what they're able to grow into, especially during these times. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, it, it'll go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. <laughs> it'll it'll be nice for people to witness, you know, the progression. Um, and we are, you know, on the Back to the Two Thousands tour, we are going to play a couple of songs that people have not heard. So that'll be a nice treat. Mm -hmm. And considering what you've been through up to this point with your career, what have you learned about yourself, not only as a musician, but as a person? Well, that's deep. Uh, this is music existence. That's yeah. Um, I think sometimes i think in the past i had been guilty of maybe putting too much pressure on myself to um feel responsible for everyone in my camp mm -hmm. and i think when i let go of that a little bit i mean because you can't uh, you know we're all adults you know i, I can't keep that burden i mean i think that was i think i've learned to let some of that go and uh, sometimes not get so emotionally involved in um all the contributors mm -hmm. you know because you know relationships come and go in life it is what it is and um it, it it's made me a better creator mm -hmm. and just knowing that you can create and if there's contributions that work great if there's not that's great too mm -hmm. you know i'm in the fortunate position to be able to to have that um feeling about it but um i always welcome uh, contributions from fantastic musicians you know mm -hmm. but i think that's that's what i've learned the most is to just you just you just put your head down and you do the work yeah, whatever all the what whatever all the noise around you that's happening with people and and drama and stuff just you just put your head down and and do the work and mm -hmm. that stuff all of that stuff falls away you know yeah in other words whether they're you know like hounding you about something or you're they're indifferent to like some of your ideas and they kind of raise their eyebrows you just kind of shut them out you can't get too attached to instances where you feel like discouraged as as a creator like you have to have that time and space to nurture yourself exactly yeah 100 percent agree lastly anything you'd like to say to your fans um only that you know hope to see everybody of course on the back to the 2000s tour and then in the summer, we're going to finish up some new music and we will have a release by the end of this year, hopefully, if not, you know, early next year. So be looking forward to new music. And we also have an announcement. I can't say anything about it yet because we still have a couple of weeks before we can announce. But there's a new uh, announcement before the end of the month that um, everyone should be excited about, too. That's awesome. Thanks so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much.